All right, if you have T-Mobile Home Internet and you're looking to get the most speed out of it and you're having trouble or you want tips and tricks, let me share some of my experience from having it for many years, including back in the beta testing of 5G and even before the 5G came out when they had 4G. So I've tested this stuff for many years. I've tried out many different gateways, including all of T-Mobile's gateways, as well as third-party gateways, external antennas, um, all types of different hacks and tips and tricks out there. So uh, let me go through kind of my main learnings. And real fast, for those that have not tuned into my channel before, this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. I cover lots of different topics, but home internet is definitely one of the hot ones in my channel. So be sure to tune in, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tune in for more. All right, and so over the years of testing, either on Facebook, Reddit, comments on my channel, uh, email exchanges, many users have asked me about their specific situation, how can I help or provide information. I try to get to those if I can. I normally can't get to everyone that asks the question, but I have put many videos out that touch on several of these topics. So I will link those videos uh, down in the description below. I also have a playlist that covers those. But for this video, I'm going to do all the high-level stuff of things to look at, and then you might have to dive in a little bit deeper based off which one you think actually lines up with what you're looking for. All right, before we get too far, I'll touch on one of the topics, and that is, are you throttled? Do you have a data limit? You know, are you getting slowed down by T-Mobile because you're this big data user? The answer is no, you're not. So you can use terabytes of data a month, and you're not going to be slowed down based off that. But there are many things that can slow you down, so that's what I want to talk about here. And one of them is deprioritization. So T-Mobile Home Internet is a lower tier for priority on the network. So when things get busy out there, either rush hour, evenings, um, even rainy days or snowy days, if people are all inside or just playing on their phone, you know that can cause the network congestion to go up and home internet users are the first to get dropped down in speed. So if you notice that, um, that could be deprioritization. The other thing to know is that they only send this out in select areas and areas get filled up with um, a set number of users per tower. Now there are people that break those rules including T-Mobile stores especially authorized resellers which are third party. They might oversell an area and that can cause speeds to slow down. So that's why they try to limit how many people get on it. So let's talk about the number one thing that you have to worry about to get the best speed out of your T-Mobile home internet and that is going to be your cellular signal. Now you might say, hey, this is a stupid video. Of course my cell signal matters, but let's talk about what does that really mean because I think the common thing I see is two things. One is a misunderstanding of what 5G cellular internet can really provide. And the second one is the setup that the person has in their house. They either aren't trying or they aren't really understanding how important an effect some of these aspects can have and that can be as simple as moving the device around i'll get into to what i mean there so the second thing that's most important is your cellular signal now yes that's a repeat of the first one and that's because i really want to drill this in so i want to go into depth here of why this matters and how you make sure that your gateway is getting that cellular signal that matters if things that matter are things like where is it coming from what tower is it and where is that tower related to your house or your location that you're using the gateway the next one is what bands or types of cellular signal are available on that tower that you're receiving and there's lots of aspects there i won't get into too much many de details there but there's 4g lte obviously there's 5g and amongst there there are several different i would say grades or uh, levels of speed within those bands so you can have a 5g extended which is n 71 you can have 5g in 41 which is their mid band so that one's faster capability it actually can hurt upload speed sometimes there's also 5g sa which is 5g standalone which you can start to get a lot of towers using like n25 and n41 combined and that can sometimes give you really good speed but that's going to be dependent on what is actually available in the airwaves that you can get. All right, so the other aspect there is what is between you and the tower. So you might have great signal at the tower and great bands, but if you can't receive them at your house, either because of obstacles, a hill, trees, other houses, buildings, that kind of stuff, then it doesn't do you a lot of good. 
All right, again, I have some links in the description for some other videos to look at. But basically, you can go look at T-Mobile's coverage map, and you can see what type of coverage they provide at your location. I've found that to be pretty accurate. Now, yes, there are some loopholes. It might not always be accurate. But you can see if you have 5G extended or if you have 5G ultra capacity, that's a good indicator of what level of signal you get at your house. Also use websites or apps like cellmapper.net and they use user data to help populate information. So not all the data is correct, uh, it can be wrong, but it is helpful for figuring out some stuff. And then once you determine what type of cell signal you get at your house, maybe that's on the outside of your house, maybe that's 20 feet up, or, you know, maybe your house is kind of in a valley or in a hole. So you have to figure out at your exact location what type of signal do you really get. So you can play with your gateway, you can bring it outside, you can bring it up on your roof, and you can check. So you can also place it around your house and try to find the best location for it to get the best signal. And even things like rotating the unit, even a couple degrees, can make a significant difference. So do pay attention to that. Uh, try doing 180 degrees facing at the, the opposite way because the antennas are on the four corners this is a sagemcom the arcadian one also has them um, or actually the, the nokia one as well the antennas are kind of all on um, four different quadrants and so you can play around with rotation of the gateway as well as location of it within your house sometimes behind a window is the best sometimes behind a wall is your best so you really have to play with that and see all right and if you have good speed uh, but it's dropping out and it's not consistent or some days it's better you unplug it you plug it back in it's better that could be for a number of reasons one of them could be because you are switching bands so maybe you're getting n41 sometimes but then it switches over to n71 or vice versa or maybe your 5g is dropping out altogether sometimes you need to monitor that and see if you can figure out uh, a trend of when your speed is slow versus when it's fast and so if it's not the band, it could be the tower itself. So maybe your cell ID number is changing. That means you're going to a different uh, tower. And I've personally ex experienced that. So either here or at like my uncle's house, he was having an issue where his gateway was not moving stationary at his house, good signal. But then sometimes it would just drop to basically nothing, like you know less than a megabit per second of speed. And he doesn't know why. I was there, we're testing it, we're seeing it, and we're noticing it actually flipping different towers. Why does it do that? I'm not exactly sure. But relocating it, moving it to a different angle, even if maybe you get a little bit worse signal and a little bit worse speed, but it's consistent there, that might actually be the ticket for you to get more consistency. And then the other thing that can cause the uh, inconsistent is congestion, right? So if you're noticing it's at certain times of the day, and days of the week then that could very likely be congestion and there's not a whole lot you can do about that really even antennas other um, 5g routers they can't help a lot of that because that's really tied to t-mobile and your sim and the way you're prioritized on the network all right so if it's not congestion that's slowing you down it could be something else like heat built up in the actual gateway so this one's a sagemcom gateway but the arcadian and especially the nokia one have had a long history of overheating and causing slowdowns. So this is a fan that uh, some users have started using, and I've shared it. It certainly does help on uh, some of these gateways, especially if they're in a uh, hotter area or if they're in the sunlight in the window. So this one here is a just a standard computer fan, and it's in a 3D printed case that was from DC 3D uh, Projects. On, uh, on Etsy and they print these out so that uh, the Arcadia one perfectly fits in here they have one for the Nokia one uh, I don't know if they have one for the Sagemcom actually I haven't looked but um, that is something people have seen makes a big difference is just cooling them down all right the other way that you can uh, reduce the heat or improve the performance of these is by turning off things like Wi-Fi on them so I uh, have scripts out there uh, some of them I've worked on some of them I've been provided from other users of ways to force the Wi-Fi off on the gateways and that seems to help it as well as taking off all of the routing duties of it you can't change a lot of the settings for it but by adding your own 
a Wi-Fi standard router, you can have your router do all that routing and the Wi-Fi portion, and this one just sees a single device, which would be your router, and that seems to help as well. All right, but if you mess with all that stuff or you don't think that those are your problems, you might have an issue where you don't have good signal in the house, but you have it outside the house like we talked about before. What that means is that you need to have an external antenna or some other way of getting that signal outside the house and then piping it inside. So I've done videos on waveform, 4x4, 2x2 antennas. The 4x4 is really the easiest way to go just because you have four ports, you have four places to hook up, and you don't have to care about which pair um, you're going to pick because you have uh, four options to pick from, or six of them actually on some of these, uh, which ports to plug them up to. So that's a great way to really get the signal. You just put the antenna outside. Or in my case, I've actually gotten away with putting it in the attic, but know that you're giving up some performance there. And that's one way to do it. Now, if, to do that, you do have to take apart these gateways. That's why this one um, looks kind of funny. Is I've had this guy apart many times, and I have not put it all back together um, ever because it's a pain. But... Uh, a lot of people don't want to deal with that, and that's understandable. And so that's where you can go to a third-party router, and you take your SIM card out of here, and you put it into this other uh, router. I've tested many of them. Uh, Peplink, Chester Tech Repairs has them. MoFi. All right, a couple other things that couldn't really be affecting your performance, especially if you're talking about some things like video conferencing, video gaming, and others. It might be your ping or latency, and that is one of the misunderstandings of 5G is or even just kind of internet speed in general is you might have several hundred megabits per second of download speed and even 50 upload speed but that doesn't mean that you have a good latency so latency is basically a lag or delay in time of um, you know when you request data to be sent and then when it gets um, sent and then comes back to you so there's a round trip time that obviously happens and the speed at which it travels there is your download speed but if there's any kind of delay then that's your latency and ping so that is not as good on a cellular network as it is on hardline almost every time now there's a couple caveats to that I've seen like millimeter wave 5g be very quick like you know single digit uh, milliseconds you know eight nine um, milliseconds of ping but on these gateways, especially with T-Mobile, I've seen very poor performance. I've seen hundreds, thousands of milliseconds of ping, especially when we're talking about loaded ping. That's a very important understanding is um, there's unloaded ping, which is just basically testing a, a delay or lag without sending a lot of data at all. And then there's also loaded ping, which means you are sending data. So it's a busy you know, interstate, and then you are also are trying to test a delay that's in there. So that's really most important for when you're doing work and you want to see uh, how big of a, a lag there is. So on the gateway itself, there's really nothing you can do to help that ping other than getting better signal. And I have noticed that external antennas do help significantly with that ping if you have that antenna um, with a good signal, signal to noise, or especially if you have it outside, that can help lower your ping, and it, of course, most likely helps your speed as well, but the ping is really what I'm talking about getting at there. So, for example, when you go to uh, a web browser and type in natortaterchannel.com and hit go, then it goes, that request goes to a DNS server, which then is able to associate that URL, that website, to an IP address that is something that I can actually send the data to. So if that link is broken, then you can't, you don't have access to the internet. Now you actually are still connected, but it just means that you're lost out there in the internet. You don't know where to go. So what I've noticed is you can go in there and do a custom DNS server. Now again, that's not on the gateway. You have to have your own router to do that, or you can actually set it up on like a computer or device as well. You can do a custom DNS server you can use something like Google or Cloudflare, uh, lots of options out there that you can use. And I've noticed a big improvement in uh, performance by doing that. So that's something you can look into to change as well. So I try to cover a lot of the highlights. It's a lot to go through, and there's many variables that play a role in it. That's why it's so hard to sometimes give you a straight answer of like, hey, you need to go do this or you need to do that. And it's because it varies. So hopefully 
that helps explain some of it at a high level and now that arms you with enough information that you can either go out and search for more or ask the right questions or ask in a comment down below exactly what uh, you're facing and see if uh, myself or other users can help you out. Hopefully this helped and I just want to say thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, thank you for donating. Um, without all of you guys doing that, this channel would not exist, so I appreciate it and take care.